Hi guys, in this section, we're going to look at the questions relating to the architecture and design of our clouds. So principally that's under the list different cloud architecture design principles in domain one of cloud concepts. And we're gonna look at how you apply that to the various services under the technology domain. So let's head over and click on start. And the first question asks, an application that is deployed across multiple availability zones could be described as, and we've got to work out as what. So is it highly available? Does it have global reach? Is it secure? Is it elastic? So the first one makes the most sense to me. Is it highly available? Well, yes, because if you deploy your application into multiple availability zones, then if one availability zone fails, you have still got your application running somewhere else. It doesn't mean it's got global reach because AZs are within a region. Is it secure? Well, it might be, but that's not because it's in multiple availability zones. And is it elastic? Well, not necessarily. You could be using auto scaling, but you don't have to. So I like highly available. Let's choose check. And that is the option. And there's a diagram here kind of showing you what a highly available architecture might look like. Now I've got a slide with another diagram which might be a bit easier for you to see. So in this case, you know, your clients might be connecting through an application load balancer and you've got your EC2 instances which are in an auto scaling group in this particular example. And they're across multiple availability zones in different subnets. So if a availability zone fails, then the application load balancer is just gonna direct traffic to the instances and the other availability zones so you don't have an application outage. Question number two, a cloud practitioner is developing a disaster recovery plan and intends to replicate data between multiple geographic areas. Which of the following meets these requirements? So if the data needs to be replicated between different geographies, where do you think it needs to go? So. I mean, principally, we're going to think here about regions or availability zones. Those are the ones that you should be thinking about. So which one is good for geographically replicated data? Well, what you ought to know by now is an availability zone is within a region and a region is a geographic area. So it's not availability zones are not a way that you can replicate data between geographic areas, whereas regions are. So I like regions. Obviously an AWS account is an account. It's not a way that you can replicate data. And an edge location is associated with Amazon CloudFront for caching data all the way around the world. So let's choose regions and, ch and check our answer. And that is the correct answer. And the explanation here does have a diagram, but I'll show you on another screen just to make it easier to see. So you have your regions in different parts of the world and within those you have availability zones. So if you needed to replicate data between a geographic area, that would be from one region to another region, not between availability zones. Question three asks, a user deploys an Aurora database instance in multiple availability zones. This strategy involves which pillar of the AWS Well Architected Framework? Now you should read the Well Architected Framework before you take your exam, it's definitely good reading and it will teach you about the various cloud architecture design principles. So which pillar of the well-architected framework does having an instance in multiple availability zones entail? So is it performance? Well, it's not really for performance. What about reliability? Now that makes sense because again, you know, we're looking at redundancy here and fault tolerance, high availability. These are all about reliability because if an AZ fails, you don't want your application to fail. Or if the database instance fails in one AZ, then you know if you have a database instance in another AZ, you can fail over. Does it optimize cost? Well, no, you're probably gonna pay more. What about security? Again, it's not about increasing security here. So let's just check that answer. And that's the correct answer. And there's a short summary of the principles for the well-architected framework here, but let's have a look in more detail. So firstly, you've got operational excellence about you know, how you operate your systems in the best way. We've got security to make sure you know, your systems are fully secure. There's reliability, which is the one we just discussed. There's then performance efficiency. So that is a way, uh, or that is a pillar of the architected framework about how you ensure that your systems are performing properly. And then there is cost optimization as well. So you know, making sure that you're not wasting money, you're optimizing your costs as best you can.